I've had a chance to give this a good look now um, and see what people are saying online. So I thought I'd address some common things people are talking about. Uh, the gain options are causing a bit of confusion. Um, when you're in basic mode, it's all simple. Uh, you turn it up and down. And uh, however many inputs you have, this records onto a two-channel stereo mix track. Uh, there is no ISO tracks recorded in basic mode. Um, I guess that's to keep the file simple rather than providing a multi-track uh, WAV file. Um, not everyone might be able to use that. Uh, the total gain on this is 96 decibels, um, which is all there on the one dial in basic mode. Um, in advanced mode, you have the gain adjustment in two stages uh, in a traditional style. So you've got a gain trim and fader, and so you have you know the bigger range on the on the the gain trim, and then you have um, a smaller amount of adjustment on a fader. Um, when you've got it on the advanced mode, you you have from minus 50 to 20 on the fader. It seems a little bit less than ideal when you when you first um, use it in the advanced mode. You can't actually see the levels of the recording um, on the screen uh, when you're changing the gain. Uh, but actually, if you look at the LEDs on the pots, um, they take over at that point and change color in an equivalent range to what it would be on the screen. So when it's unlit, then there's, the gain is too low and it starts to, as you increase it, it starts to get a faintly flickering green. Um, and then it goes to a steady full green um, and then onto orange when it's peaking. Uh, so, you know, you could put the gain up to the point where it's just started to peak and then back it off a bit um, and leave it at that and then adjust it with the fader. You've got uh, 70 decibels of range on the fader. So, you know, you, you set it in the middle. Um, you set the fader in the middle when you're doing the gain adjustment initially. You've got 35 decibels either way. So, you, know, you shouldn't really ever need to go in um, unless something's dramatically changed. Um, in the advanced mode, the mix track and ISOs record at different levels. Um, the mix track records at post fader level, um, while the ISO track records at the level you set initially with the gain, uh, and it ignores it ignores any fader adjustment. You can set it so that the ISO track is at, an ex is at a very safe level, um, and then the mix track is is going to be the higher one. So, you know, ideally, it, you, know, you you can keep it with the mix one, but if not, you, you can go back to the ISO um, if you want to do it. Uh, if you want to be able to adjust the ISO levels on the go as in basic mode, uh, but you still want the advanced mode features uh, for everything else, all you have to do is choose the custom mode um, and you set up the custom mode with the gain set to basic and leave the rest of the settings to advanced. Um, and uh, then you've got all, all 96 decibels of gain on the one, on the one pot. Uh, and then it's going to affect uh, the ISOs and the mix track are the same. So basically that just, they'll both go up and down with that. Um, if you only want ISO tracks, and you don't want a mix track, you can save the card space and probably the battery life, I would guess. Um, you go into the menu um, to the record settings and then you, uh, where it says record left or right. Um, on the second screen, it just says off, so you can turn it off. Um, so, uh, and then on the, you'll see that they're grayed out now on the, on the front panel. Um, but uh, this only works um, properly when the gain is set to advanced. Um, I think it's actually a problem that they're going to fix because um, I, I can't, it can't be right. And uh, and I've tried everything to get around it, and it isn't, there's no way. Um, it's uh, what happens is when you when you've got the uh, when you've got the gain set to basic, and um, you turn off the mix track for some reason it then puts the ISO tracks at a very low level. I think it seems to be resetting to the, um, to the default uh, lowest uh, gain level um, with the, uh, on, when you're on the advanced one, uh, which is six decibels, and that is about right. You can very faintly hear it, and that is it. So it's not a big deal, but I'm absolutely sure that that, that is a problem, and they're going to fix that um, with, with a firmware update, no doubt, at some point. Um, the limiters on this are simple on and off. There's no fine tuning options. Uh, they're independent for each ISO track. Um, unless the tracks are linked as a stereo pair, then the, then the limiters for those tracks are also linked. And there's no way to deselect that. Um, in the option for the mix track, you can choose to have the limiters linked or not, uh, regardless of the linking of the ISO tracks. So if any of the tracks in the mix are limited, then both tracks will be of the mix. However, the, the separately recorded ISO tracks themselves are unaffected um, uh, by any other tracks being limited. So it's just, um, it's only linked then in the mix track. Um, and if all of that seems complicated, don't worry about it. Um, you, you just put it in basic mode. And if you need something else, check the manual. And if it's there as an option, you can probably go into the custom mode and add that aspect of the advanced mode while leaving the rest of it in basic mode. 
Um, so, you know, you can kind of make it more advanced as you go along, as you understand sort of different parts of what you're doing with it. Um, one nice feature of this is when you're adjusting something on one of the inputs, um, if you click the next input, uh, it stays on that screen out of the sort of free input screens you've got. You don't have to navigate back to that one again. So it's really nice and easy uh, to adjust uh, each channel in the same way. Regarding the power options, um, if you only have the four AA caddy, uh, then the battery life is probably going to be a bit of an issue for you. Um, you can't have this much processing power, phantom power, multiple mics, bright touch screen, um, and expect four AAs to last a long time. It's just not going to happen. So I bought this. This is a 20,000 milliamp hour pack, 20 amps, I guess. Um, should last about 20 hours if the AA's uh, runtime is anything to go by. Um, I can hot swap it as long as I've got the AA caddy in, on the back. Uh, and it, which also means I don't need to worry if, if it's pulled out by mistake. Uh, but saying that, you know, if you're worrying about USB leads falling out, chances are you've not tried the USB-C connectors yet. Um, I wouldn't normally do this, but as you can see, it's not going to fall out. Yeah, I could use a smaller one, a smaller battery, but with this, you know, I can simultaneously power a couple of wireless receivers as well. Um, you know, I can recharge my phone during the day and go all day without worrying about it. You know, it's, it's going to last all day. Um, you know, and then I've only got one battery to recharge at the end of the day, you know, which is fantastic because it's such a pain, isn't it? Obviously having a multiple loads of AAs to charge, um, you know, and it's still pretty compact. I mean, this battery pack is pretty big. It is, it's, um, it's similar. It's about the same length as the Mixbri. Um, it, it almost weighs the same actually as well. It's about 450 grams. Um, but, uh, as I say, I mean, it's still, the whole thing as a package is still very small considering how long it's going to last. You know, I don't think you'll find any other battery, any other power solution that's going to be better than that, um, really. But, uh, you know, there are obviously small ones out there. So overall, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much delighted with this. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a couple of little things that I think I might've changed if it was me, but I do wonder why they made the gain trim, uh, adjustable from the side pot rather than the pots on the front. Uh, traditionally, there'd be separate pots, but I, I can't see any. Uh, I can't see any point for it now. You've got to, you've got to press another button to change between the two anyway. Uh, so why not just have it from one to the other? Um, there might be a technical reason for that. I don't know, but uh, but especially when it's in a bag, it is kind of fiddly to get to to get to the side one. Um, and in fact, especially because the uh, the headphone jack is right next to it as well, that kind of blocks your fingers. So yeah, um, I'd probably try and not have it like that if that was me. Um, and I definitely wish the stop button wasn't lit when it's off, when it's not recording. I'm, I know for a fact I'm going to look down at this at some point, see see the meter's reading, see a lit button, and you know, it's just in, I'm in a rush or something, and I'm going to think it's recording when it's not. Um, I'm sure that'll be easy, easily done at some point. In the HDMI timecode mode, the recording stops if the HDMI HDMI lead comes out. Uh, it then starts again if you put it back in. Um, but uh, I just think it's it might as well carry on. I think I'd rather. It carried on and ditched the time code, you know, where it was, um, and uh, or just not have any on there, whatever. But I'd rather, I think, have the recording without the time code than it just to stop and give a message saying, oh, there's no time code, I'm stopping now. Uh, when the battery power gets close to depleted, there are warning beeps on the monitoring headphones. Uh, so you have, you have a few minutes of no notice before it's going to shut down. Um, when it shuts down uh, automatically, if you don't change the batteries, uh, then it will save the file. It's, but the files are corrupted. Uh, they don't work in, in the mix pre or on the PC. Um, however, if you go into uh, the computer management and, and uh, do a file ch um, a check on the card, um, it will actually scan it for errors and fix them. Um, and then the files are OK. And they'll play back in the mix pre or in Windows. Um, I think probably this will be fixed later on with firmware because um, it, it should be possible to fix them in the mix pre. And I counted off um, while I was waiting for it to stop. Um, and I think it lost about two seconds of the end of the recording. It doesn't seem like it saves it every sort of minute or 30 seconds or something like that. It seems like it's continually saving um, and just not putting the final kind of note on the end of the file. Um, but all of the data is still there. So, you know, clearly though, best to just swap the batteries when it says. If you've got any questions, obviously ask them below. Um, I'll do my best to answer it.